The violence in Kashmir poses a challenge to New Delhi because it represents a new phase in a decades-old conflict. Military might alone may not solve the problem this time. The dispute over Kashmir has triggered three wars between India and Pakistan. At the center, Indian-controlled Jammu and Kashmir state that has seen decades of armed militancy. Today, Indian troops face a different foe in Kashmir. CNN IBN senior correspondent Pavan Bali. It's been called the gunless struggle, Kashmir's own intifada or sponsored agitational terrorism. In the next half an hour, we are going to bring you an insight into the phenomena of stone rage. This report was an in-depth look at the people who have changed the face of the Kashmir conflict. In 1989, when it started, this was an armed resistance. But now what we are seeing is the protest and the conflict has moved into the hands of the people. And they are young people. They're teenagers, 16 years old, 17 years old. These are not basically armed militants. They are just the locals there who are they're just tired of the status quo over the Kashmir issue. In their eyes, the status quo is an Indian occupation. For decades, India has refused to even talk about independence for Kashmir. For all of those years, New Delhi has branded militant opposition to its rule of this part of Kashmir as terrorism, sponsored by neighboring Pakistan. Today, Kashmir's intifada challenges that description. They have been trying to say that this is being supported uh, by Pakistan and militant groups and the terrorist outfits like Lashkar-e Toiba. But what you, when you look at the streets of Kashmir, they're just young people there in thousands and hundreds of numbers who come out every day so that their voices are heard. The young protesters say they are hurling stones to demand their rights. In a post-9-11 Kashmir, the gun has lost credibility, but their stone rage is gaining support. So they do have uh, more support in Kashmir than the regular armed uh, militants. In fact, what you see in Kashmir is that these teenagers, they are laying down the policy for the separatist leaders. It's not the separatist leaders who are laying it out for them. This week, police responded with force to crack down on months of protests. After 10 people, most of them teenage stone throwers, were shot dead, thousands more people took to the streets in defiance of the curfews. Public buildings and the homes of local officials were torched. Crowds chased down police and took their weapons. Other police resigned, saying they refused to fire on unarmed protesters. India clearly wants to contain the worst violence in almost two years. What it appears unwilling to do is talk about what these young protesters really want, a future and independent Kashmir. I'm Jim Clancy, and you've been briefed.